Welcome to the Manchester Museum. It is seen every day by students of the university, but how much do you really know about the importance of museums like this to your education so far? We asked members of the public what they thought the main purpose of the museum was, and they replied with education, a collection of history, and a challenge to our preconceptions of life. The importance of the museum stretches far beyond this. There is a huge array of collections that the public don't see, which we have gained access to for the purpose of this documentary, to show you quite how vital museums are to your education and the research that many of us will continue on to do. When we went behind the scenes at the Manchester Museum, we discovered many weird and wonderful creatures stored in a variety of ways. This ranges from the spirit collections that can be seen here, containing a plethora of different species, to the hundreds upon thousands of animal specimens, some of which have been stored for over a hundred years, that are kept in drawers in the vast rooms behind the public displays. The sheer diversity of the collections and specimens is unimaginable, and zoology students have the opportunity to see this amazing variety of species that have formed the basis of their education. And it is a shame that many of them are not aware of this opportunity. There have been hundreds of volunteers working on maintaining the collections and conducting their own research at the museum who have unparalleled knowledge and passion for the collections they work on. One of these volunteers is new recruit zoology student Molly Zarcher, who had her eyes open to the fascinating collections behind the scenes when she began working as a volunteer at the entomology department. I come here in my spare time to manage and restore the crustacean collection, home to over 500 specimens ranging from the crabs you see on holiday to the lobsters and shrimps you eat. I plan to catalogue each and every specimen before correctly classifying them all into the same modern format, making our records more accurate and our specimens more accessible. Working here has both extended my knowledge of taxonomy and helped me to further preserve these exciting creatures for people in years to come. Some of these crabs have been collected and boxed over 100 years ago, and as a zoologist it is important for me to understand where my existing knowledge has come from in order for me to progress as a scientist in the future. Another important aspect of the museum is the education of the younger generation. I recently held a stall at a museum event where I presented some of the crab specimens. This is the claw of the European lobster, one of the largest European crustaceans. Um, they can reach up to 62 centimetres in size and the claws are about half the size of the body so the actual lobster is massive. Um, this is one of the specimens which you would never get to see unless you had a museum like this. There are loads of cool examples of crabs that we have at the museum, but here are some of my favourite. This is the hairy stone crab. It lives on the bottom of the ocean and was found in the southern Australian coast. It is extremely slow moving and hairy on its back so it's brilliantly camouflaged from any predators. Here you can see how on its underside it's not hairy at all and it doesn't really need to hide this area. I think it's cool how you can see the direct result of evolution in this one species of crab. The Manchester Museum is known for its specimen of the giant spider crab in its front window which is monumentally sized. Here we have the long-legged spider crab with similar anatomy to the giant spider crab but just slightly smaller in size. It can lay around 2,300 eggs per spawning and has around three spawnings a year. And this is the long-eyed swimming crab. It lives in muddy and opaque waters on the ocean floor and has eyes on these long stalks which it pokes above the mud to keep an eye out for both predators and prey alike. Another great adaptation to compromising environments. There are a number of purposes that I feel represent what the museum means to me. Firstly, although drawings are an important source of information, the museum also provides organisms to study first hand, some of which are no longer present in the wild. Museums also hold an important record of species from the past so we can study evolution in progress. Thanks to museum collections, we can study this from not only local areas but from all over the world, allowing geographical comparisons of specimens. As you can see, the work of volunteers such as Molly is important to keeping the collections at the museum up to date and in the public eye. An opportunity to work at the museum is priceless to her education and we hope that through this short documentary, you have seen just how much knowledge is held in the museum and how much it can also help your education as a budding zoologist.